Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to run a molecular density functional theory calculation using the Draper module of TurboMole. So I'm going to assume that you already have TurboMole installed and also you know the directory where it's installed too. And Draper actually stands for Resolution of Identity. So that's, that's where you get RI from. And then PER actually stands for Periodic. So essentially Draper module allows you to run DFT calculations for molecular molecular as well as periodic systems and resolution of identity is just another name for the density fitting approximation so anyways um, what you can do is now you can head over to your terminal so in my case I'm already in the directory where I have installed server mode so if I do something like ls which stands for listing the contents of the directory you will see that uh, I have these um, contents and I have this bin directory that contains the binaries or the executables for the various modules of the turbo mode. Then you also have the scripts directory, which actually contains a lot of useful scripts for the various modules of turbo mode. And you can see um, if I do PWD, that stands for print working directory, then you can see that I have th this turbo mode installed in home slash minus slash turbo mode. So similar way, you can also find out where turbo mode is installed in your case. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to run any binary executable or script of any of the TurboMole modules from any directory within my command line. So in order to do that, what I would need to do is I would need to extend the path variable of my environment to include this TurboMole directory so that um, we can, for example, let's say we want to run Ripper. So instead of typing out the whole path, of the Ripper executable, Ripper binary, what we can just do is we can type in Ripper as it is. So in order to do that, you need to type export, then turbo div, which stands for turbo mode directory, equals, and then you can go ahead and select this, copy it by pressing control C or right click, and then you can now press control V and paste this path over here. You can also type it out yourself or you can right click and paste it. And now you can hit enter. And now what you need to do is you need to source, actually you need to source this particular, you know, script right here. So you can just copy that and then you can do turbo div. And uh, keep in mind that this time you need to use this dollar sign. This is how you will be accessing this turbo div environment variable. And then you do slash and then you can paste by pressing control plus V, this config turbo env. So basically it configures the turbo mode environment. And once you do this, now you can check if you can call the executables from anywhere or not. So you can do something like which ripper and you get this. So you get that it's currently pointing to the ripper executable within the turbo mode binary directory and inside that you have this system name which actually may differ from system to system depending on the kind of architecture you have. Now currently this is actually pointing to the executable that runs serial calculations that is it will only use a single core of your computer or just a single processor and it won't be very fast so it won't be taking advantage of all the cores on your computer but anyways um, let's currently stick to this then later on in this video i will show you how to also run the parallel calculations but for now just uh, let it be like this now come back to the home directory and let's say i create some directory called turbo mole um, tutorial so you can call it whatever you want turbo mole tutorial let's come into that directory and now let's create another directory um, for the molecule so in this tutorial, we will be using the acetone molecule to, um, to demonstrate the Ripper module. So let's go ahead and make a Ripper and hit enter. Make, uh, so MKDIR actually stands for make directory, by the way. Now you can come into this acetone directory. And as you can see, it is completely empty if I do LS. Now what you need to do is you need to get the atomic coordinates of the acetone molecule. So that is the first and the most important step for running any kind of calculation with any quantum chemistry software that you need the atomic coordinates. So here, so here I actually have the uh, atomic coordinates of the acetone molecule in an XYZ file. So XYZ is just a chemical file format. However, for thermal mode, 
we are actually going to need these atomic coordinates in a different format called the turbomole format or the coord format. And you might be wondering, like, um, where do you get these XYZ files or the atomic coordinates of the various molecules from? So you can simply just head over to the PubChem website and type in the molecule and then you can get the XYZ coordinates for that molecule. However, as I already mentioned that you need for the for turbomole, you need them to be in the turbomole file format. So you can head over to this website where I have built a nice GUI using which you can convert any XYZ file to the turbomole format. Currently, it by default, it comes with the benzene coordinates. If you scroll down, you can also visualize the molecule. Anyway, you can just come over here, copy paste these contents. And by the way, I will leave the atomic coordinates or the XYZ files, core files, etc. And all the files that we will require in this tutorial or we will create in the description down below. So be sure to check them out there. Anyway, so copy these, come here, control A, control V, paste them, click here. And you see that this is the acetone molecule and you have them in the turbomole quad file format. So just go ahead and select it all, control C, copy it, come back to your terminal and um, create a file called quad. So nano is the text editor that I'll be using. Now you can hit enter and now you can hit control plus V to paste them and then you can hit control plus O to save them. Now you will hit enter and then you will hit control plus X to exit. So now if you do ls, you will see that you have this quad file in your um, directory. Now, in order to create the input file, TurboMole comes with a very nice, um, you know, step-by-step um, -step, uh, terminal or command line uh, input um, utility. So, and it is called define. So you can just write in define and hit enter. This works because we already added the TurboMole directory to the path variable so anyway so now you see that uh, this starts and it shows some of the stuff um, like this some configuration of our turbo mode setup now what you can do is simply hit enter hit enter again and then um, let me just make it slightly bigger so we launch define we hit, hit enter twice and um, here yeah and then you get this so here you are going to just use this um, command. So you will do a space quad. So this will help you to read in the atomic coordinates on this quad file. So you will hit enter now. And now you can check if the file was read correctly or not by doing this C. This means display coordinates. So now you can see that you have these 10 atomic coordinates for the 10 atoms. So this means that everything was read successfully. Now you can hit enter and then you can go ahead by um, pressing asterisk and then hitting enter. And then you can type in no. Then you can do B all. So yeah, so essentially now you want to assign the basis set for your uh, calculation. So basis sets, um, I would say um, some useful basis sets for Ripper are the def2 basis sets. So what you can do is simply do b all def2 svp for our tutorial and this is how you assign the um, basis set now again if you want to check if the basis sets were assigned correctly or not you can do bl so basically it will list out the basis sets assigned so essentially we have assigned def2 svp for all the atoms you can also assign different basis sets for different atoms by doing something like b then hitting enter and then here you see the syntax for the um, various uh, ways you can assign the basis set. So in my case, let's change the basis set for the carbon to, sorry, uh, to C, uh, sorry, uh, to um, def to TZVP and hit enter. Now if you do BL, you will see that the basis set for the carbon atoms now actually def to TZVP. However, uh, let's just come back to Dev2 SVP for all the atoms and then check it. Yeah, okay, so it works. Now you can again go ahead into the next menu by um, pressing the asterisk on your keyboard and then hitting enter. And now you need to um, 
create an initial guess. So for any uh, DFT calibration, any uh, electronic structure theory calibration, you need to start from somewhere and that is called your initial guess. So we will generate some molecular orbital coefficients and using the extended Huckel theory uh, guess. So that is EHT right here. So you will pre type in EHT, press enter. Do you want the default parameters? Yes. So you will just type in Y, hit enter. Molecular charge zero. We will keep the molecular charge zero. And then you can accept the occupation. So essentially we have a closed shell uh, occupations. So up to the 16th uh, shell are completely doubly occupied. Now uh, we accept this occupation by pressing Y, hit enter. And then we, ha we have reached the final and the last menu of the defined utility. So since we want to run a DFT calculation, you need to um, type in DFT to um, specify the functional. So I will type in DFT, hit enter. And now we need to specify the functional. To do that, you need to do func. So in order to see the list of functionals available, you can just type in func, press enter, and then you will get a lot of um, functionals that are uh, available within the turbo mode itself. So without using any XCFUN or libxcd um, um, libraries. So let's choose, um, I would say PVE for our purpose. It is a GGA functional, by the way. So let's type in PVE and hit enter. So now you can see that the functional is PVE. However, it still says that DFT is not used. So in order to turn it on, you need to type in on, hit enter. So now it says DFT is used and the functional is PVE. And then you can also assign the grid size. So you can do something like grid M4, hit enter. And you will see now the grid size is M4. The la largest possible size is actually M5, I think. So we'll do that and hit enter. Okay, so this uh, seems good. So now we can type in asterisk and hit enter to come back to the main menu. And now in order to perform the calculations in Ripper, you also need to specify an auxiliary basis set, which is the basis set for your auxiliary density. Remember I said that the Ripper module actually stands for resolution of identity periodic. So that is RI over here. So you need to type in RI, hit enter. And then you will see that it is currently saying that RI is not used, which is not good for us because we want to use Ripper. So first of all, you need to type in on, hit enter, so that it will now say RI is used. Then you need to specify the auxiliary basis set for the Coulomb term. So here you have a sign auxiliary RIJ basis set. So you can press J bus, hit enter. And then what you will notice is it already assigns some basis sets. So first you should do BL and hit enter. And then you see that it has actually by itself, based on the basis set that we defined, it has also assigned the uh, def 2 svp auxiliary basis sets, which is good enough because this actually corresponds to the uh, def 2 svp basis set. So the auxiliary basis sets should are basically created keeping in mind some particular basis and you cannot choose any arbitrary auxiliary basis set. So yeah, so this is good enough for us. We don't need to assign anything or change anything. So you can just type in asterisk, hit enter. Once again, asterisk, hit enter and come back to the main menu. And now we can just quit uh, defined by again doing asterisk, hit enter. So now if I list out the contents of my directory now, you will see I have something called aux basis, basis, control, quad and mos. So essentially, quad is something that we had already that contains the atomic coordinates. MOS is actually the molecular orbitals, the initial guess that we just generated using the extended Huckel theory guess. Then basis actually contains the basis sets for our atom. So if I open it, you can see that. So I will do cat basis to open it. And now you can see it starts some, with something like dollar basis. Then you have H, def to SVP. And then you have the exponents and the coefficients for the DEF2SVP hydrogen basis set. Similarly for oxygen over here. And then similarly for carbon over here. And similarly, you will also notice um, the auxiliary basis set. So if I do cat aux basis, then again. So this time you, you notice that it is much lengthier than before. For example, if you look at the hydrogen auxiliary basis set, it contains up to D um, basis function. So it has um, basis functions with the angular momentum two compared to the 
gen the normal basis set which only had basis functions with the maximum angular momentum one corresponding to the p shell so this time uh, so this basically shows you that auxiliary basis sets are at least like three times or two times bigger than the 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 uh, corresponding basis set actually okay so um i think i have showed you aux basis basis and yeah i didn't show you moss so if i open the moss uh, file then this is actually going to be a really large file. So it contains the, um, you know, the orbital coefficients, um, the initial guess uh, for a system. So anyways, now clearing it all up and now once again, LS. So yeah, so I have showed you now aux basis, basis, quad, MOS. However, I haven't shown you the main input file that is the control file. So the input file went for trouble modes are referred to as control file. So if you open it, you will see like, um, we have set the internal um, coordinates to off and then we have the coordinates in actually Cartesian format. Then you have the basis set. Then we see that we have 16 um, closed shells with the occupancy of two. Then we have specified the, I mean, the default um, uh, maximum SCF iteration limit is 30. Then these are some uh, damping parameters useful for um, accelerating the convergence of the SCF. Then um, again, this SCF orbital shift is also useful for uh, SCF convergence. Then the energies will be stored in the energy file, gradients in gra gradient file. And then here uh, we have the DFT parameters, the grid size as well as the functional. Then SCF con actually stands for the convergence criteria for the SCF DFT calculation. So currently it is seven. That means that the uh, as soon as the difference between energies in the successive SCF iterations would be less than 10 to a minus seven, then uh, the program will terminate. It will um, consider the SCF to be converged. Then you have something called RI core, which stands for the memory assigned for the uh, three center two electron or the like the RI integrals. So currently it is 500 megabytes. You can increase it further to uh, make it things slightly more faster. It doesn't uh, like make a huge difference but yeah it can make it at least two times or three times um, uh, faster calculations for the coolant term then you have rij which basically uh, means that we are going to be using the ri approximation for the coulomb term that is the j then you have the j bus that is the auxiliary basis in the aux basis file number of atoms 10 and yeah so that is all so now again we can hit clear and now the moment of truth now we will be able to run the first ripper DFT calculation using for molecules. So let's um, do something like ripper, then space, then let's um, transfer the output to output file and uh, hit enter. Now it will take uh, maybe a moment or two to end since we are running only a single core so let's be patient yeah okay already it's um, done so now if we do ls you will see that now we have a lot more files so a lot of these uh, ripper files store the orbital information or the bands information in case of periodic um, calculations and this is the output file that we have just generated so let's go ahead and open that so yeah so here we see that the calculation was done within 11 seconds. Wall time is equal to CPU time here because we use just one CPU core. If we use multiple, then the CPU core would be a lot more than the wall time. But wall time is the real time that uh, that we experience in our life. So coming to the top of the file, okay. So here we see that uh, the calculation was run using just one thread, then you have some important information about um, where and how it was developed, some references for the um, turbo, for the Ripper implementation. Then you have the atomic coordinates. So whenever, if you get some wrong result, you should check the atomic coordinates in the output file, whether they make sense or not, or compare them with your quad file. You can see then the basis set information. So we specify def2 SVB basis set. Here you can see how many H atoms you had, how many C atoms, how many oxygen atoms, number of primitive the uh, primitives, Gaussian primitives, and then the number of contracted. So essentially this um, 
14, 14 and 5 are the number of basis functions for each atom for a total of 86 basis functions. Here you have the information about shells, number of primitive shells, number of contracted shells, total number of Cartesian basis functions and total number of SCF basis functions. So basically what it means is, um, so uh, SCF basis functions are in are the spherical, um, for SCF, uh, turbo mode uses the spherical uh, atomic orbitals, so that, that is why they are slightly less than the Cartesian basis functions. And if ever you want to compare the turbo mode ripper energies to any other software, then you should also run that software using spherical atomic orbitals. So yeah. Then you have the similar auxiliary basis information. So this time you will see compared to 86, you have 262 auxiliary basis functions. So three times. Yeah. So yeah. So um then you have some information about the SCF and related options. So maximum number of so yeah, so there's another thing called DIIS that is that stands for a direct inversion of iterated subspace, which also helps to accelerate convergence. So currently it is set to four, but if you go to Turbo Mode Manual or maybe in some other tutorial, I will show you guys how to change that. And then you have this diagonalization method set to two. Even I don't remember exactly what this was, but yeah, you can definitely check out the uh, Turbo Mode Manual uh, to find out. Then you have the parameters for the screening of basis functions. So what basically this does, uh, this shows is that um, the tolerance for a lot of uh, integrals like um, to, to screen out some of the negligible integrals to make the calculations faster, what parameters are being used. This is not really much useful for a general user, but yeah. Then you have some information about the initial orbitals or bands. So it says that it is currently reading orbitals from the MOS file that we had created using define and then it says that the um, we, that it is using gamma point orbitals and um, yeah essentially since it is also uh, meant for periodic systems so you will see a lot of that terminology here so yeah never mind that for now then it says um, some uh, information about the density functional theory so it should be functional and then you have some information about the numerical integration scheme so basically we have um, 19,000 uh, grid points per atom and the total number of grid points is around 162,000 and um, yeah then some information about the continuous fast multipolar method which is again on top of resolution of identity Ripper uses CFMM which stands for um, which is short for uh, continuous fast multiple method to accelerate the Coulomb term evaluation and it uses um, octrees in that so that is why you have these um, parameters for that and then uh, you have some information about the RI core so if you remember we specified RI core um, actually it was by default 500 megabytes so you'll see that uh, Ripper tells you that it actually only, only needed 10 megabytes for that and yeah it will use just 10 megabytes out of that so yeah then you see that your SCF calculations have begun and um, here is some information. So after the first iteration, you have the number of electrons um, by, by um, multiplying the or by contracting the density matrix with the um, overlap matrix. And then you have the number of electrons by um, performing the numerical integration on the uh, quadrature grids for the XC term. And then you have the SCF energy change between two successive iterations since this is the first iteration of course this is going to be huge because it just assumes zero for the first one and yeah some damping factor as i said to extract the convergence and then you have the kinetic energy coulomb energy exchange correlation energy and the total energy for this particular iteration then the next iteration you will notice that the scf energy has changed by 0 0.69 so it was 191.85 now it's 192.55 negative and yeah, and then it also shows the difference in the RMS of the densities between the two successive iterations. So it is much smaller, around 10 to the minus three, and then we go on like that up to um, 11 iterations. So after 11 iterations, you see that the SCF energy change is now less than 10 to the power minus seven, as it is 2.13 to 10 to the minus eight. So it's less than minus seven, and yeah, so now Ripper considers the calculation to be converged. And then finally, 
it prints out some statistics which are again more uh, meant for the periodic systems um, so let's just skip them here and then it also prints out some um, profiling of like uh, how much time was taken by which part of the program so yeah so that is it that is basically it that is how you perform a molecular density functional theory calculation using the ripper module of turbomol serially so this was a serial calculation now very quickly before ending this tutorial let me just show you how to perform it using multiple uh, processors so let's just clear the terminal and this time let's do something like this so we'll do export para arch equals smp so basically we are saying that the para arch environment variable is now assigned smp and this actually stands for parallel architecture so and smp stands for shared memory parallelization so uh, turbomol actually supports um, for some modules it supports mpi which stands for message passing interface and it works for distributed memory systems and the SMP actually works for shared memory and uh, Ripper module actually only supports shared uh, uh, memory uh, parallelization so yeah so let's just go ahead and hit enter and now let's source the uh, config file once again so um, to, to, hold on turbo dear yeah so let's just source this configuration uh, script again and this will by itself set the um, the um, set the correct path for the um, ripper module so now if i do which ripper hit and hit enter you will see compared to before the system name now has this underscore smp in it at the end so this means that now I'll be using the parallel version of Ripper and now just uh, do something like Ripper and pass the output to something called output parallel and hit enter. This time the calculation should be done much more quicker. Ah, actually, sorry, I made a mistake. You also need to specify the number of cores that you need to run the calculation on. So let's do that as well before I show you the output. So let's uh, do export OMP num threads so basically ripper uses the omp um, uh, omp for parallelization so you need to specify the number of thefts for that so let's do four and hit enter and then run the calculation again sorry before um, before yeah and also before i run it let me do one more thing so um, what i want to do is i want to delete all these you know these files that we have generated from the previous run as well as the molecular orbital coefficients file yeah so why i'm going to delete that i will tell you in a moment so ls yeah so now i have deleted all that and now i'm going to generate that file once again the reason is because if i run ripper again within this directory what it's going to do is it is going to read the molecular orbital coefficients from either the mos file or the ripper bands files if they exist and then continue the calculation from that and since we have already converged our system so the scf will actually uh, end in just two cycles so that would not be a good uh, you know uh, showcase of how the parallel uh, works so let me just go ahead and run define again and quickly reach the this you know um, molecular orbital assignment module EHT Y zero Y Y Y Y exit yeah okay so now let's um, run the calculation once again this time with four cores so let me go uh, go up yeah so this was the command ripper and the output to output parallel press enter okay so now let's open this file and this time you see that the calculation was done in merely 3.28 seconds compared to the 11 seconds or 10.7 seconds earlier of, of the serial run. So if you now come to the top, you will see that it will say that number of MKL threads is now 4. So this means now we are utilizing the 4 threads for OPMP as well as the M MKL for the uh, BLAST operations. Yeah, so this is, I think, it. So yeah, so that is all. 
I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. There will be many more tutorials coming on Chabumol, PySeer, Cypher and other software. So please make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you have any doubts or questions, then you can leave them in the comments section down below and I'll be happy to help you out. And I hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.